Hi, welcome back to Togatech. In today's video, we'll be building a 32 button box for use in flight sims, driving sims, farming sims, any type of simulator that you want to program key functions to individual button switches. In this video I'll go through the tools you need, the materials you need, how to wire the whole thing up and program it and what's more is this box is actually backlit so you can use it when you've got low lighting levels like in your simulators when you turn the lights off and you can still Right, this project is based on a uh, Leo Bodner input output card. It's got 32 digital inputs. It's also got um, eight analog inputs, one hat switch and a spare five volt output. It's a nice little card, not the cheapest on the market. So you can use this one or do shop around. There's plenty of other input output interfaces that you can use with this project. I went with Leo Bodner because um, they are very reliable and it's a well made product. It also had all the analog features that I want. But do have a look at some others and you might be able to find some cheaper alternatives. Next thing you're going to need are four missile style toggle switches, two rotary switches, ten toggle switches, sixteen mini toggle switches, and an A4 size opaque acrylic sheet. Next, using a piece of free software that I downloaded from the internet, which I'll leave in a, a link in the description below, called Inkscape, I designed a layout for my button box. Using Adobe Photoshop, I took my Inkscape file and inverted it so it gave me a black and white image with a black background. I then printed this image onto a piece of translucent paper. This is stuff that you use for decals or models etc like that. And then stuck this to the surface of my A4 acrylic sheet. Using my drill and suitable size drill bits, I drilled out the location of all the switches. Now, um, a little bit of advice here. Trying to drill with the forward drilling motion tended to snag on the acrylic and can cause cracking. So I actually reversed the motion of the drill. So it was actually drilling anti-clockwise and basically burning its way through the acrylic but it made it much safer and all the holes came out perfectly okay for all the switches to fit. But I've started to populate the, uh, the board with my switches and I do want this board to be backlit but I have noticed that uh, despite the fact that I've used black background on my translucent uh, sticky paper you can still see light coming through that area so what I'm going to have to do is mask off the areas where the writing are to specify what the switches are for and black out the rest of it on the back so that the light doesn't shine through any areas where I don't want it to. 
Oh, I must once again apologise for the poor audio. Um, must invest in a better microphone. Right, where I last left you, I was uh, I had removed all the switches from this plate here. This is the rear of the switch panel. Okay, there's the front there. And of course we had the problem with the light getting through the back here and not just illuminating where the writing is underneath the switches but illuminating the entire box. So what I've done here is I've masked off where the uh, labels are for each switch, a little bit of masking tape and then I've sprayed the entire back of this panel with three coats of this plaster coat paint. Now um, very good quality paint, paint. I use this on all my 3D models. If you've seen any of my previous videos on 3D models and 3D model painting, um, I use this as a base colour, either this in black or in grey, depending on the type of model. But it coats very well. What I'm going to do now is try and use a little scalpel hook here and pick off the labels and uh, hopefully we'll just leave where the writing is and still leave the black paint on the rest just delicately remove these there we go this one so you can see now the writing through there so when that gets illuminated with the led you should just see the label under the switch and not the rest of the box well that's the theory anyway Like that, but it's just gone over a little bit. Just use that sharp knife just to scrape that paint off. Right, that's all of them removed. Let's flip it over and see what it looks like, shall we? No, not true. Right, well, you can definitely see. Um, I don't know if I can get that on the camera for you. But yeah, you, you can see more than just the writing, you can see the entire square. But it's definitely an improvement. I don't know what I focus, where I am. Get it there somewhere. You can see yeah, right through. That one that says strobe isn't right. Not showing, showing more than that. Again, not perfect, um, but it will be okay. I think I'm just going to try and clear that little bit of an S there on strobe. It's using the scraping of the knife there. Three coats of paint in. It would be better to do something sharp so it doesn't scratch the plastic. Uh, back of the end of the knife there. Oh. 
but it's good paint. It is well. see that there. You should be able to see the S of the strobe. Oh, come on, focus. You need to have auto focus on this camera. There we go. You can now see the S of strobe. Right, I've finished populating the board now. All my switches are on. Um, now we're going to connect them up. You're going to need a few extra tools for this operation. I've got um, a few tools here in front of me that you're going to need. Right, starting with, I've got a digital multimeter here, which I use to check the polarity of the switches to make sure they're facing the right way up and to know which one is the common and which one is the positive. I've got a little handy uh, tool here that holds my wires when I'm doing my soldering. Also got a magnifying glass that allows me to get a closer view and a little light on there. Right, what else we've got? We've got a soldering iron here. Uh, it's it's worth investing in a, a nice soldering iron that's got variable temperature. Because some of the components and things you end up soldering are quite small so you need to be able to regulate the temperature of your soldering iron and have a very fine point on it. Next we have um, some small hand tools. Uh, hot glue guns, always quite useful. Stanley knife. A pair of side cutters. And some a uh, cigarette lighter to shrink the heat shrink, and a pair of wire strippers, some solder, some flux for cleaning the wires and contacts before soldering. So now, using my digital multimeter on a continuity setting. I'm going to use this to ensure that the switches are facing the way I want them so that they turn on when they're switched down. So just holding that on the common, the centre pin on these are the common, and just checking whether or not they're the right way up before permanently fixing them in place with some hot glue. You can see some of the uh, switches are already wired here. That's because I've actually uh, used them out of my overhead panel for the Boeing 737. I'm just reusing the switches that I had in that panel. Right, set the switch now in its right position. And there we go, we've got the continuity there. So now I can see that the centre pin is the common and the top pin is my positive. So all I need to do is work my way along this line and make sure they're all the same way up.
with the uh, missile style switches um, you need them facing so that when the cover is closed the switch is actually off so you have to lift the cover and flip the switch upwards to give a positive response to actually turn the function on so you just want to make sure that you um, you, you can't actually fit the uh, cover on wrong because there's a little tab but you uh, want to make sure that when you wire them that the on position is when the cover is up and the switch is switched upwards when the cover comes down it automatically switches the switch off on this panel I have a uh, APU start switch which uh, you can see here now with this with uh, most of the toggle switches or all the toggle switches pushing them down turns the function on but with the APU start switch um, it has two functions so I need it to work in the opposite direction so when it's down it's in the off position and when you move it up to its first position it will switch the APU on and then the third position is a momentary contact switch which is the start so that will act as APU start that's the APU start there it just flicks back to the center position and then you pull it down to turn it off this will actually take two functions on the Leo Bodner card because it acts as two actual switches even though it's all in one housing right, I'm now happy that all the switches are in the right position I have removed a, a few switches as you can see from the panel because they were faulty and I've ordered some replacements now the switches along the top here are going to have a, uh, a collective common so I'm just going to solder this piece of fuse wire across all the pins so it just joins all the commons together just feed it through the legs of the switches to so get a good contact while I'm doing this my soldering iron is heating up to the right temperature even though the Leo Bodner board has a separate common connection for each input or ground connection it doesn't actually matter um, they can all be fed to one ground connection I've ordered some nice switches to uh, replace the ones that were faulty what what happens with them is because they're so small if you put too much heat on them the contact actually or the switch contact melts inside the plastic case and they don't make a very good contact this is a, another style of Leo Bodner card I have this is a 64 pin Leo Bodner card which uh, uses little jumpers to connect it to but we're going to be using this one which has got these little uh, push down connectors there's a USB input and then you've got the little push down tabs on the top where you push the wires in you've got the input wire for each switch and next to it you have the ground wire connection to it there's 32 inputs on here digital inputs there's also eight analog inputs and a hat switch input as well so yeah, just by pushing down these clips you can push the wire in and that makes a secure connection you've got there you've got B I think it's B32 there so you just take your red wire from each switch 
put it into the B input connection. And the B stands for button, obviously. And then the black wire just goes to the ground connection next to the button connection. But we're here where I'm soldering all the grounds for the eight switches. I'll just put it in any one of the ground inputs that's available. There's plenty along here. Right, I've um, put in the LED strip now in the bottom of the box, glued that in place. Also glued the control card, this is the Leo Bodner card. Um, we can just test the lights, might blow the camera at the moment. Whee, like that, see? So it's now backlit. And what we'll do where this I've got a temporary connection here just twisted together I'll probably fit a 5mm jack on the inside here so I can have an external power supply plugged into there also got to drill a hole for the USB cable to go out but there we have All right let's just let's put this on top here mountains of wire to get through look at this Right, so we'll just set that on there temporarily. I'm not sure if the camera will pick this up too well because it I can try and do it in um, post uh, video editing. I'll try and bring the contrast down, but if we turn the backlight on. So it seems a bit bright, but you can make some out. There's one there, you can make out the flax one quite clearly. Others are a bit too bright to see there. But that's just the camera. With my eyes, they look fine. Absolutely fine. So I'm now going to turn this all off and then start soldering up the rear of the switches. Let's just turn that back light off so it doesn't blow the camera. Turn those over. Some of them are already wired up. That's the beauty of these pre-wired switches. But that's nice. All I've got to do is strip that end back. Yeah, just strip them back. In fact, they're already stripped back. I just poke them into one of the contacts on the Leo Bodner card. Um, each one, there's 32 inputs on the Leo Bodner card, and it's um, it's got a ground and a B connection. So. Button one is B1, and right next to it is a ground. They all have an individual ground. So all I've got to do is put a red wire of this switch into B1. So 
so on and the black wire into ground do that with every one of these switches and away we go so I'm going to pause the camera now I'm going to solder up all these switches that haven't got any wires on and then I'll come back to you once I start connecting it to the Leo Bodner card right so I've mounted the button box to my sim rig and uh, I'm just loading up the joystick interface in Windows and we're going to give it a test just to make sure all the buttons are working before we uh, try the flight sim there we go joystick interface There we go, it's given us 32 inputs come up there. It's also showing a hat switch, but I haven't got that connected. So let's try with one of the missile style toggle switches. That's my uh, left engine start, it's my right engine start, master battery, ground power. And then we've got various light switches here, nav light, beacon light, logo light. A lot of these switches obviously apply to the Boeing 737, but you can you can adapt any any function to any of the switches. That's it, they all seem to be coming on. Good. Right, that's the APU start switch, which has got two functions. It's off, on, and then momentary on. It's working. You can just make out in the bottom of the screen, that's Lily, my dog, my co-pilot, obviously. She's just getting herself comfortable. That's it. All 32 switches working. Functioning great. Right, I'm going to load up um, DCS Flight Sim and assign the switches to various controls and that. I'll do a follow-up video with it actually functioning. I'll take a flight and use the switch box for functions in DCS. Okay, I'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or any suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to catch your future videos. Okay, well thanks again for watching Togatech and I'll see you next time.